beginning, it's not really called identities, it's just called simplifying. Because they'll give you an expression like this, and they will just say simplify. So I guess I should write that here. But we don't have any endpoint in mind. We just have to get it as simple as we can. We want to get rid of as many things and write it, if we can, as just like one trig function. So in this case right here, what we need to do is find the common denominator. So this is going to be like rational expressions. <clears throat> On this side, you have a chunk, 1 minus sine x. It's a binomial. On the right side, you have cosine. And so to do the math here, to combine these fractions, we need to multiply by a fraction so that each side has a common denominator. So my common denominator, like over here, I think I already have a 1 minus sine x. i got to multiply by cosine over cosine. And now my denominator will be cosine x times 1 minus sine x. On the other side, it's going to be the opposite. I already have a cosine x, so I need to multiply by 1 minus sine x all over. Oops, and I meant for that to be in red there. So 1 minus sine x all over 1 minus sine x. Okay, the idea is that now under each, each fraction we have cosine x, 1 minus sine x, and then we can just focus on doing the top. So the top here is cosine times cosine is cosine squared x minus, and I'm not going to distribute this x, the sine x yet. I'm just going to write it as an ex, a fuller expression like that, undistributed. And then downstairs we have cosine x, 1 minus sine x. <clears throat> okay, so some people are going to be tempted to just cancel these 1 minus sine x's. But think of it like this way. If I had 1 minus 2x all over 3x, the rules of algebra are that I can't just cancel out this x as much as I want to. Okay, uh, What I would have to do is break it up using the butterfly. The problem with that is we just undid that. We don't want to break it back up into two fractions like up here. What we want to do is keep it as one fraction. So I'm going to instead distribute the negative sign in to both of those terms in the parentheses. So we have cosine squared x. It's going to be minus sine x times 1, which is just minus sine x. And then minus sine x times minus sine x is plus and it'll be sine squared of x right there. All right, and downstairs, the denominator is remaining the same. OK, now based on our lesson, uh, the, our last video, we know cosine squared and sine squared, when they're added together, and in this case, they're both positive, they're being added together, that is just the same as 1. So I could write minus sine x plus 1, or I could write 1 minus sine x and just rearrange the order. Because it doesn't matter if you're adding a 1 if you put it in front or behind. All right, and then cosine x, 1 minus sine x. Now at this point, we are, we are able to do some canceling. The thing is that we can cancel binomials if we have the same exact binomial on top and on bottom, and that's the only thing there. What would complicate this is if I put like a plus one on top, because then I have more than just the chunk up there. What I need to do then is make sure that, yes, I have that binomial chunk on top and on bottom, and then you can cancel those out. So if I cancel something out on top and there's nothing left over, there's just a one, and downstairs I have cosine x. Okay, so as I go along here, I really should have been putting some equal signs here because we're just rewriting, 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 and it's getting simpler and simpler until we could finally write just secant of x. So now the idea is that the top equation is equivalent to secant x, and we are for now just ignoring all the things that might be happening if we're dividing by zero and so on, but um, they should be equivalent besides that right there just secant x. Alright, so I, will, I have a problem for you to try. 
I'm going to write it down and then I think you should try this pause the video give it a good shot and then maybe just watch a few seconds at a time to see if you're stuck what you should be doing next so here we go All right, so I'm going to start showing the solution to simplifying. Uh, in this case, we need a common denominator. We want to get one fraction. And so I'm going to multiply this side by, oops, by the other denominator. It reminds me a lot of when like you have one half plus one third. One half plus one third, you have to do 3 over 3 on this side and 2 over 2 on this side and there's no other way to get a common denominator. It's the same here. If we have completely different denominators, you can multiply by the opposite side. So here it's plus 1, secant x plus 1. Alright, this whole thing is going to be over secant x plus 1. Those two things. And then on top, it's going to be plus 1. Now this minus is going to be going on everything here. So I'm going to put a minus and then a big parenthesis, secant x minus 1. That minus in fractions, that is what the number one reason people get adding and subtracting fractions like this wrong. Because often they'll make it a negative secant and they won't make it a negative negative 1. So they'll be having a negative 1 in the end. Just be careful about that. Okay, and so after that, what I notice is if I drop this in, I would get a negative secant, and we have a secant on top, positive already. So those cancel, but then 1 minus a minus 1 would be 2. The whole top is going to simplify to that, and now we have secant x plus 1, secant x minus 1. Now you may remember there was something called difference of squares with polynomials. If you multiply out x minus a and x plus a, if it has that form, it's going to equal x squared minus a squared. And the reason is that when you do the outsides and the insides, they are equal and opposite. They're going to cancel out. So in this case, we are going to end up with secant times secant, which is secant squared squared x, and then we're going to have a minus 1, because when we do the outside-inside part of the foiling, it's going to cancel out. All right, and we're almost done. See, this here, you may remember with Pythagorean identities that, well, first of all, you can write out this guy here, and then we want secant squared involved. And so how to get that? I would be dividing by cosine squared over here. Now that would be secant squared. So I divide by cosine squared theta, everything else. Oops. And so here's my formula. Tan squared theta equals, <laughs> not equals, tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. <clears throat> okay. So instead of secant squared theta, what I can actually write is tan squared theta plus 1 instead. And so we're substituting in an identity we know. And now the nice thing about that is those, those 1 and the negative 1 cancel. So really this is 2 all over tan squared of theta and... Tan squared, if it's on the bottom, you might remember um, 1 over tan is cotangent. So this right here turns out to be 2 cotangent squared of theta. And so our goal here is to get it as, as simple as possible. Get rid of fractions if we could rewrite it in terms of like cotangent or secant or cosecant. And that's as simple as we can get it. So you might be wondering, as we look back at all of this, how did I know what to do next? Well, a lot of it is just combining a fraction and then distributing, simplifying, foiling out. And then often when you get to a spot where you're kind of stuck, start looking for some 
things that are squared because it might turn out to be one of the Pythagorean identities.